I grew up in a tiny island under India named Sri Lanka, and my family was extremely devout. I grew up breathing Islam. That was the way of life. It was in our DNA. There were two events that occurred as a child that changed everything. One was I was blinded by my brother accidentally um, through a toy airplane in my right eye. And the other was I was sexually violated by an extended family member. Normally, when things like that occur, the shame and the punishment is put on the abuser. But in my culture, the shame is put on the victim. I was seen as this half-blind picture of imperfection. And now I've ruined our family name. In order to run from that, we left Sri Lanka and moved to the United States. Moving to the United States was extremely difficult because there's the standard of, okay, you are now Muslim thrust into a culture that is absolutely contradictory to everything you believe. I felt really suffocated because it was, it was as if I was watching through a glass window, watching people enjoy these simple daily things like eating food or wearing pretty dresses that were modest, but I wasn't allowed to even think of those things. There was these questions that I felt that Islam couldn't answer. It took and it took and it took, but it never gave. And it simply commanded that I obey in fear of Allah. I remember thinking, if this is what life has to offer, I don't want it. My first taste of Christianity came when I was living in New York City and I met my neighbor, Emma. 9-11 had just occurred and so our entire you know, city is grieving. I hear Emma and she's just like, hey, you wanna come over? We're praying. It didn't occur to my nine-year-old mind that they might be praying to a different God. <laughs> so with a hint of curiosity, I just go innocently. The love that was in that room was overwhelming, but the minute I heard the name Jesus, I bolted out of that room in fear, knowing that I was strictly forbidden from any interaction with things that had to do with Christianity. And I felt so guilty that I had even been there, and just the fear of what if my parents could have found out. I lived in constant fear of my father. I was seen as an object, and so there were regular beatings. I am 12 years old, and I'm considering suicide. I said, God, if you are real, show me who you are and I will follow you. If you're Allah, if you're Buddha, if you're Jesus, I just want truth, please show me who you are. And I had no idea that he would actually answer. And months later, I met Angela, the brave young woman in my junior high class. And she approaches me and then she says, do you wanna to come to church with me? And I walked into that church. I was terrified the entire time. I had all these clashing mental things, but yet my heart was feeling something that I couldn't push away. So I went forward in, in the altar call and I didn't even reach the front of the altar. I was in the middle and just broke down where I could in the same moment feel all my pain and brokenness being given to God and receiving His love and mercy and forgiveness. My life changed that day. After my conversion, I did go into a life of secrecy. I had four years where I hid my faith for my family, and I knew I wanted to fully give myself to Christ. But at the same time, I'm being forced to memorize page after page from the Quran to recite at our mosque gathering. It got to the point where I could not hide my faith anymore. My father confronted me and said exactly what he would do. He did say the words, I will kill you. So my dad had left on a business trip after this confrontation. My mother approaches me and she says, our phone has been ringing off the hook. The mosque has been calling and saying, either we take care of you or they will, which in my understanding is that I'm going to be killed. My father has now cut his trip short. My phone is cut off so that I have no access to anybody outside. I'm kind of held hostage at this point. God kindly brings individuals my way. One of them was Brian Williams, and he knew what was going on. Brian says, I know the perfect place for you. Let's take you to Florida, Beverly and Blake Lorenz. So we all kind of come up with a plan in order to escape my home. I hop on a bus, and for two days with no food or water, I make my journey to freedom knowing that I am following my God into the unknown with the only promise that he will be with me. I had no idea what awaited me in Florida when I got there. You know, my plan was simply to stay there and hopefully just get off the radar and 
become 18 and be able to be free legally. But my parents had other plans. They were very intent on finding me. I actually ended up going to a juvenile detention center, which is jail, um, throughout that period for a few days. I had numerous foster homes that were not easy. I mean, it just seemed like I went from one abusive situation to another. On my 17th birthday, I had a court hearing where my story went national. The custody battle began. This is not just some threat. <laughs> this is reality. On one hand, I was glad that we had the media like speaking out my behalf. That way nothing could be hidden. But at the same time, it was really unreal just the ability that the press had to say whatever they wanted and I couldn't interject. During that time span, the Lord in His kindness moved me to a wonderful home with two Christians who love the Lord with all their heart, who took care of me, who loved me. And to this day, I still call them Mama and Papa. When I was 18, the case closed because I aged out of the system. And in that moment, it was as if there were shackles just off my hands. And I remember just squealing, thinking, I am free. Like I had the freedom to worship and I could sing. I was so excited that I didn't have to hide anymore, that I could just open up the Bible. I was so proud of it. You know, like, look what I have. <laughs> God has redeemed my story, but there is still a real loss. I have not had any interaction with my family, and I think it's hard for people to understand that. But I love them. I think prayer has been a huge factor in me praying for my family and having compassion on them and grieving for them and hoping that they would find the same freedom that I have found. I want to give hope to people who live in my Islamic culture, who lived as I lived, that there is hope, that it doesn't have to be scary. Jesus showed himself to me in such a way, through his love, through his word, where my heart was lit ablaze. I look at what God has done in my life and I'm so grateful. Even in the midst of such loss and grief, I have seen God work miraculously in my heart and giving me freedom and joy and love and peace. Despite all the loss and grief I feel, I have no regrets and I would do it again.